Oké, okay, hier weg. Oké, okay, radio, good uh, morning. Uh, this lesson is specific for grade 10s and 11s, and it's interpenetration and development. It is for you to be prepared and ready for your final exams. So I'm going to take you through a couple of key steps. Of course, uh, for a lot of you, it's going to be a bit more than the revision, right? Preparing you for your finals. Um, so let's have a look at what is given. Remember, this is going to be most likely question number two in paper number one. Paper number one is in which projection? First angle orthographic projection. Okay. So let's look at what is given to you. You can just read with me. The incomplete front view and a top view of an equilateral triangle prism that has been shaped to fit around a right regular hexagonal prism. So if I look at this from the top view here, this is the hexagonal prism and we've got on the side of it an equilateral triangular prism that is shaping to fit around it. Okay, The axis of both prisms lie in a common vertical plane. In other words, the center of this triangle and the center of this hexagon is in line with each other. They've also given us an auxiliary view. All right. If you look at this very carefully, if this is the front view, and I look from, from this angle in the top view, do you see that this corner, if I take that up, is this corner here. The outside corner is this one. So also this front corner, if I look from the front, is this line. So what's this hidden detail at the back? Well, that's that corner. If I look from the front on this top view, that corner is going to be behind. That's why it's hidden detail. And so also that one. Yes? All right. And then our side pipe, on the top there, they've got A, B as a seam. That's literally this one here. At the bottom, we've got a flat base. So from the side, we've got a triangle running uh, down to a base. Do you see that? Okay. What do we have to do? We have to draw this given top view. Then we have to complete the front view, clearly showing how these two um, sol uh, uh, um, parts join to each other. Okay, so we have to do the curve of interpenetration here, and then we have to complete a right view and develop the surface of the triangular prism. Now, just quickly, this is our front view, this is our top view. A right view in first angle orthographic projection goes, that's the x, y, 45, that will be the right view. Yes? You all know that already. Okay, so that's part of just planning and understanding what I am being taught here and having to draw. Okay, front view, top view, and you're going to complete the right view. So why am I doing this? Because on the page which I'm laying out here, I have to make sure that I fit everything in. So just zoom out for you to see that. So we're going to have our front view, top view, right view and that will still leave some space for our development okay happy all right now where do i start this drawing yes most likely top view in some parts well in the sense of the hexagon and then we will need this auxiliary view because they don't give us the height of the triangle do you see that this height of this triangle isn't given so we're going to use an auxiliary view to get this part so but to start off we're going to do the hexagon they also tell us that there's a 45 degree angle here. That's the center line of our hexagon. And each side is 35. And so all of this will be used using to get this one. The over, overhang there is just 15. Okay. So there's quite a lot of space that I can use on this page. Where is my... Oh, there it is. Okay. So let's start ourselves off. On the top here, I only need 70. Do you see that? So I can really start quite high on my page. I'm just going to give myself... Space here, just space it out. So there's about 70, all right? Let's say I have an X, Y, and then I still have enough space. So if I do my X, Y round about the center of the page, this is going to be more than enough space for me. So I'm going to do a construction X, Y first, and I'm going to try and get this 45 degrees as an initial line. This is still just construction. Do you have enough space? I can maybe... Take out this just for the sake of not having that interfere with my drawing. So I'm re really in the middle of the page, 45 degrees. Let's do a center line. 
like they've given us. All right, and then all right, they don't give a distance away from the x y. We're going to we know our hexagon to draw a hexagon. You're going to take that 35, set it on your compass as 35, and you'll be drawing a circle to start it off. And so, if you, if I just do a little bit of a test here, if I if I use this as my radius. You can see there's still enough space between the x, y. So I'm going to mark that as my point, as my my um, axis, a common vertical plane in which my um, triangle will be drawn. So if you look at this line here, is in fact that line. Up to that point, everybody happy? You with me? Okay. So to do that, make sure you're on 35, radius 35 on that center. And we're just going to do, first of all, a construction circle. And then we know keeping the radius the same on this point, on either side, make a mark. This is the first two, two parts of the hexagon. So this is, in fact, that. This there is, in fact, that. And we're just going to continue on that circle. And we should meet up again here at the end. If we've done this correctly, that's going to meet up, yes? Same on that side. Okay. And so now I can use my triangle. And this is going to be a top view. So you can draw that nice and dark. Okay, just drawing these ends. All right, for this drawing, you're going to have, it's about 35, min 35 marks of your paper. You also have about 35 minutes then. All right, we're working at a minute paper. A little bit. Okay. That center, we're going to have our pyramid uh, triangle come on the side. We don't have the width yet of it, so we'll just pause there for a moment. Now I'm going to project this upward. Move that down. So construction line. The height that they've given here on this XY is 70. All right. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So if I have that already lined up, I can draw that in nice and dark. This front is going to be a nice and dark one as well. Let's do a construction line here. Okay, that's going to help me. So this one is hidden detail. Yes, you can quickly go. Yep. All right, there we go. That's another line. At the back there, it's hidden detail. All right, so I'm just drawing what is given. All right, on the side there. Okay, this one we're not going to draw fully because we understand. Actually, this one probably should have also just been a construction line. So we've got about that curve of interpenetration. So we'll just leave them as construction lines. For now, both of them. All right. What I do know is the base will be solid. And the space will be solid. Happy? Okay. All right. Any questions up to this point? Are you with me? Got the top view, we're going to still have to do the side view here. All right, one thing that now needs to be done is this auxiliary view, of which the base is 60. Now, I have, um, in my rush, not left enough space here on the side. I think a lot of you that kept up with me is going to be stuck here as well. But there's a quick solution to it. Remember, we're drawing the front view, the top view, and the right view. And what do we know about the right view? The right view is in... This, the, the, the pyramid is in line with this. So what we can do is we can extend this and we'll just already start with our right view. And so there's a 45 here. So I can, as I extend that, bring that up. Okay. And now I can right here add the 15 for the base of my right view. Draw the base here of the triangle. And it's 60, in other words, 30 on either side. 
So I'm actually really drawing the right view here. Okay. Get that tight up, that tight up. Okay, and so this becomes also my auxiliary view because what do I need? I need this to just copy that across to get this height and that one across to get this height here. Okay, and then I know 15 on. Okay, so what I had to do, I had to do auxiliary view here. Now, if I had space here, I could have did the 15 up, draw a construction line, added the 60 that they've given me here, and finish that triangle. But I didn't leave enough space, so I had to do it on the right-hand side here. Well, right view side. It's on my left-hand side, but it's the right view side. But I could have just used the center line to the 45 and up to get the center of it. So I've actually just uh, taken one step ahead in this drawing. Okay, happy? All right, let's try and finish this curve of interpenetration first before we continue here. So to do that, I need to get my width correct here. So I've got this center line so we're going to go 30 on either side, and you can double check it from here if I want to. That distance, bring that across. Maybe I should do that just for the sake of helping out here. So that comes down and across. Same with this 45. And across. And so my top view is in fact that line. This line there, that seam AB. Okay. You're late on. All right. So if I look from the right hand side on this top view, we've got seam AB here. We're going to call this top point number one. Then we go to the back, which is two. And this is come back to it as three. If I number it on my right view, this top here is one, then this corner is two, this corner is three. So if I number it here, then this corner is one, two is at the back, and this three is here on the front. So I'm always numbering clockwise. Start at one point one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. So how far does one go in? It touches the hexagon at this point so I can bring that up and where it meets this one that's the point where it meets okay one there number two is at the back so up all right now this is going to go behind so it's going to be hidden detail just We'll probably draw over this one, but I'll just make it for, for you to see that. So two is at the back. If I look here from the front on the top view, then two is going to be at the bottom and it's going to be in detail until this point. Make sense? All right. Now if I look at three, this is three coming on the front, goes all the way up to this point here, up. And so this is where it's now going to over, go over the, the two up to this point. All right, there is number three coming to the front. Okay, happy? All right. Okay, stay with me because here comes the most important part. From, if I think of this auxiliary view, from three to one, this flat surface is this flat surface. Do you agree with me? If you guys in class can actually look at the screen, so I, I just want to say I have some reaction here. 
And I want you to understand this. This flat surface, one, two, three, is in fact this flat surface, yes? All right. And it's also the one that I see here in the front view, yes? Okay. Do you see that from this point where three touches the hexagon to where we get to one on this flat surface, there's not a straight line between the two. So I can't go and draw a straight line here and think it's going to be correct. Now what happens is there's a wrap around a corner. Do you see that? Okay. So it's very important that you keep note of that. That corner is this line that we drew in the... Sorry, my, my, it's this line. Okay? This corner on the front. So we have, we're going to have to find where does it interact with that line. Now, what you can do is you're going to take this corner here, all right, to the 45, up, yes, and back, and where it meets, make a dot. Just see that again. Should I draw it to the, let's see if I do it to the highlighter, if that helps you. So, between 3 and 1, there's no straight line, it wraps around, so I'm going to take that corner, to the 45, up, and all the way back. And this corner here is now that one. And so now I can go from 3, it goes to that corner. With confidence, I can draw that in. Then from this corner, it goes to 1. Yes? With confidence. Okay, now I'm at 1. So the front, this surface here, it looks actually like it really wraps around there. I'm going to make it nice and dark so that you don't get confused any further. There it is. That's this front surface. Very clear. Easy to see. Okay? All right. Now I'm at 1. What happens now? I'm going from 1 to 2. Is there a straight line? Is there a right line? No, there's another corner. So how do I get that corner? Let me use a different, uh, see if I have a different color here. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to take it from this corner to the 45s. And you see there, that's 1 and 2. If I bring this up, there's 1 and 2. Bring it back. Now I just have to find this corner again. It's right at the end, on the end layer. And so let me take it with the green pen to help you. Up. Up. And back. And just make sure it's in line here, right on that edge, this corner. That's at the back. So if I now go from 1 down to this point, hidden detail, of course, because it's behind. Yes, from this corner, where does it go to? Down to 2. And you remember, there was my 2 initially. So with confidence, you draw that hidden detail. Okay. Now I'm at the base, I'm at 2, alright, now between 2 and 3, they're on the same height, so if I get from 2, I still have to, wrap that, that bottom surface does wrap around all the way, but do you agree it's in one line? So there's no need for us to try and draw that, it's, it's not visible, I have to still complete this, so here you're going to have all the way to there, there, and then what do we have? What happens here? We're going to have a hidden detail. Okay, hidden detail. Running down. That is the corner. What am I drawing here? What's this hidden detail? Well, this is this corner that still runs all the way through. Remember, it's two two solids that's formed in, around each other, not a, a hole or anything. It's two solids. Okay. Good. That gives us our curve of interpenetration in the front view we finished the top view and now I can draw my right view, to do the right view I'm going to bring my paper as it moved sorry about that, let me line up again alright, so now I'm going to bring across each one of these corners and up up This is a, a interpenetration that 
Grade 11 and 12s need to be able to do with confidence. So I would really suggest if you've in any way struggled with this, please make sure you draw it again. Okay, so here, solid line, hidden detail, solid line. This is this corner. That corner there, up, again, solid line here, hidden detail. All right, this corner on the outside is solid. This one behind, if I bring that across and up, hidden detail. And this one here also. And up, hidden detail. All right, so if you were given this in the exam, you would have gotten here on the side. If you look at the marks given, let me just see if I can run that through. The top view was six marks. Your front view was 11 marks. Your right view was seven marks. Please make sure you label the X, Y here. And then the last thing that we have to do is, of course, our development. And we'll do that now. This is X1 and Y1 at the bottom. All right. All right. Developing our uh, triangle. Are we going to do it here on the side? There's enough space. You could possibly have done it at the bottom also. But what do we have here? We have a triangle. All right. So let us start ourselves off here. We know all three of these sides will be in a straight line. The length of each one is 60, right? So there we have it. There's the 60. Just have a start. That's one, two, three parts. So this is my one, this is my two, three, and I end again at one. All right, so we can do construction lines here. Each side here is 60, okay. Now, how do I get this um, development done? So we've got between one and two, we've got a straight line. Between two and three, we've got a straight line. Between three and one back, we again have a straight line. Okay? But here starts the uh, interesting part. Now, what do you know about a development? It needs to be done using true lengths. And a true length, the is if a line is parallel in the one view, it is a true length in the opposite view. Are you with me? A line wat, the, wat hier parallel is aan die XA, is a ware lengte in die teenoorige selde aansig. Nou, dit is die waarheid vir al twee van hierdie, nie? Alright, but let's, let's start here. One, this distance at one, we're just going to do the main one, two, and three first, and then we'll do the other division. So there's the one, so do you agree with me, if I take that distance, pay careful attention, and I place it here, that's going to be the length. And I'll have to do it here at the bottom as well. Yes or no? Yeah. Alright, that's the length of this side. Two would be that length. So if I take it from here, because it's parallel against this XY, that is a true length here. You have to use true lengths when doing a development. So two, take that measurement, place it at two with confidence. Three... Okay, take it to three, confidence. Yes? All right. But do we have straight lines running from one to two and from two to three? No, we don't have straight lines. We are wrapping around corners. And so I'm going to use this right view. Between one and two, look at the distance. Between one and two, that distance, pay careful attention, that distance, all right? It's from one, the sharp end, my pencil is this side. So I'm going to place it here also from one to two, yes? And I'm drawing a construction line for that. Now I need to get that height. Where do I get the height? Well, where is the intervention between one and two? It's at that point. Oh, sorry, no, there it wraps around. Yeah, it's that. Sorry, took the wrong one. From one to two at the back, it's the green line. Sorry for that. It's this distance. All right. So there it is, from 1 to 2, 
Take that distance. Here. Make a mark. Okay. Where do I get this length now? Now I go back to my right view. Well, it is parallel here. Okay, so I'm going from this point to this point. Now I am at the point here on the side. Then it goes all the way down to two. That's that one. Forget about this one. That was done in error. Keeping up. Right, now we're at the bottom at two. Now we're going to go around to three. So for that, what do I have to do? Well, it again wraps around here. So there it is. Now we're going from two in the direction of three. Take this two. Just take a deep breath and follow me. If you, if, you, if you feel you've missed me, take a deep breath and listen. There's a flat base between two and three. It wraps around each one of these corners. Okay? So at this point, I want to know what this distance is. I have to follow there. There's a distance. Okay? From two, make a mark here. That distance is in fact that distance. Construction line. How far does that go in? Well, I have to see here. It's right on that corner. Yes? Make a mark. All right? That was number... Um, uh, that was that one. Now, we're going to go to direction to three. It's this one here. Closer to three than to two. Okay? From three... We I get construction line. What's the length there? Alright, it's that length which will be the same as that length there. Okay. Then it goes to three, which is this point, and now from three to one it is a wrap around again. Always use true length. That's a big rule here. When you do the development, must be true length. And that's between 3 and 1. So it's over to this side. What's the height? Come back here. Okay, it's going to be the same as that one. So once I have all these dots... I just go join them in with confidence. Yeah. Now EGD becomes a serious business when you get to these drawings. And you are pressured in time. So if you unsure, you're going to be stuck. You have to practice these drawings over and over and over and over and over again for you to be able to, when it comes to pressure, be able to draw these drawings. I promise you. Okay, doing it live with you is already enough pressure for me to practice it. Okay, but what do we have here? We have the development of this equilateral triangle. And you can see here that the, the end and the start will always be the same length. Selfde lengte. Jou begin en jou einde gaan altyd die selfde wees. Jou hoofdpunte, jou twee, jou drie, moet die selfde wees hier as die drie en die twee. Alright? And then I have to just determine where does it wrap around. Well, I have to keep in mind the different surfaces between 1 to 2. Well, it's there's the wrap around. So I bring it up, up. It's from 1 to 2. It's that distance. That distance there. Okay. Was from 1 in the direction of 2. It's this distance. Yes. All right. And now the height, how high is it? Well, I have to get that from here. It's this distance. Oh, this one is sorry. that distance there is this distance. Okay. Radio, that is the revision for interpenetration and a development of a side pipe. Uh, please do not erase your construction lines. Make sure that's kept. And always, always work with true links. All right, that's 30 minutes. I would have finished this in time. Was this a final exam? And so should you. So keep drawing it. If you've done this once, 
clean your page, do it a second time and see if you can take off 15 or 10 minutes from your time that you used to draw this. And that way you practice yourself and you make sure you're able to do it with confidence. Now it's your turn.